Hello there. My name is Martin. Welcome back to our second mini series on Shin Yi Kun Tao Silat. This mini series will be more dealing with the practical side, and as you can see, it will be with partner applications. Before we go into the partner applications, let me quickly show you how a Shin Yi form might look like. What I want you to pay notice to is what is the one element that is coming more than all the others. In other words, what move has the most repetitions? Exactly. If you look at it, the move that we repeated most in that form was this. We started from the Santi, going back, entering in the wedge, doing some follow-up. Going back, entering the wedge, doing some follow-up. Going back, entering the wedge, doing some follow-up. Going back, entering the wedge, doing some follow-up. In other words, the going back and entering the wedge part was what we did most. And usually the move that is used or utilized most in traditional forms usually is considered as being of great combative value by the masters, hence the many repetitions. However, it is also common in the traditional martial arts that it is innocently hidden so that a casual onlooker might think that this is just the transitional move so that I can do the splitting. Look at it from the side. Santi posture. Going back, entering the wedge. Doing splitting. Going back, entering the wedge. Doing splitting. Going back, entering the wedge. Doing splitting. If you don't look carefully, the going back and entering the wedge looks like a completely innocent transition, a mere adornment. But that is always the tricky thing about the traditional martial arts. You should always have an eye open for what is being repeated the most. And going back, going forward, is the move that is certainly repeated more than any other moves, no matter what Shin Yi form you look. And that is to whether you are looking at classical mainland China Xing Yi or whether you are looking at many of the Kung Tao Xing Yi variations. And so, it behooves us to take great care in looking at what is in there. This is the classical Xing Yi side. From the Kung Tao side, you know, Kung Tao or the Silat side rather. Silat isn't Silat without the Jurus. And uh, since Kun Tao Silat is a blend of several martial arts, like I said, continental Chinese martial arts, traditional Indonesian, Javanese, Burmese, and so forth, arts, which are more tribal, and also some European arts. Don't forget the Dutch and the Spaniards have been there for quite some time, and they have introduced quite some of their own. So there was a cross-pollination for many centuries. Now. Uh, if it wants to be Silat, it has Jurus, which is a kind of very short forms. And in the Kun Tao Silat way of practicing Xing Yi, this would be the first Juru. Going back, entering the wedge, that would be the start. A Juru is a little bit longer, so. 
going back, entering the wedge, exchange, exchange, going back. Entering the wedge, exchange, exchange, going back. Now we did it left and right, and now you continue. Forward, exchange, exchange, going back. 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 I think you get the idea. From the side, forward, exchange, exchange, going back. Forward, exchange, exchange, going back. Forward, exchange, exchange, going back. Forward, exchange, going back. Forward, exchange, And now let us see how some of this might apply in partner practice. I'm going to attack with my right hand and the right lead from my right shoulder roughly to the middle. So, exactly. That is the way how she is deflecting. Note that this is a replacement counter. This is not so much a block as much as this is a direct attack on me. We will see. Let's see it in the side view for a couple of times. And you see, she does not necessarily use the hand configuration that we used in the juro, which is okay, because the juro is just the art of moving right without any pressure. Now, the applications, the standard applications that we draw out of the juro, is finding out how to make that work for me. So, obviously, she is a different person than I am, so the details of actually applying it will naturally be different than for me or anybody else. Now we will add something. Please attack me. Right. So, now we have here my counter attack, and now we have this going back part. Let us see. Let us see how well she does when she does it to me. As you can see, one needs to pay attention not to put one's own nose in the opponent, but that is why you practice this stuff, so that you get aware of what needs to be done. Exactly. See? She will never make that mistake again of pulling me in her. That is what a good master every now and then needs to do. In a commercial school, you should be wary of such methods because a student might sue you. But if it is a personal disciple relationship, every now and then, if you are a master, you must give them a memorable moment. Because one memorable moment of embarrassment saves a lot of blood when it comes down to it. Okay. Now glide. No, no, no. Stay here, glide down here and grab where it is natural and now the step. Yes! And if you wonder why I'm going so willingly down, come. If I do that and she resists and I go down with all my body weight, what she gets is maybe a destroyed rotator cuff and whiplash. And the same would be true for me, although she is much lighter than me. If I attack, yeah. and she pulls her entire body weight in that, on that lever, there is no way I'm going to resist that. 
there are some guys out there who are strong enough to resist that. And how the judo applies in that case we will see later. But for the moment, again, just intercept me. Yes, beautiful. And draw me down. And you see we are almost doing that break dance like for the simple purpose that doing this fluent is not the first step. First you must get the motion down. Let's show it from the other side. Yes. Yes. Good. Again from this side. Now again, just the entry movement. And if you wish to correct your student, think of it, the student is not yet familiar with the moves. So the student needs to trust, learn to trust the moves. So actually what I do right now, if you look carefully where my fist tra travels, my fist is not yet really aiming for her. I'm actually aiming for her right shoulder. So that she has a chance to get it. First she needs to get the move right. And then we make it more difficult. If she has the elbow bent, she has more control over my arm. No, and sometimes you just stay in the posture so she gets a feeling of how she could deal with the pressure that I give her. Allows her to adjust her stance and this and that and the other. And now, now you can also maybe do some corrections because her arm hand would belong more to my elbow. And now she could do the change more proficiently. Again. Right. That, that if she does this change, there is already an element of splitting involved. See my video on splitting. So this is all playing into each other. Now, of course, there are also other possible attacks. I have so far attacked her right shoulder, right? Now I will be attacking her left shoulder. But she will do the same move. Exactly. So, as you can see, this is still the same motion, only this time this goes a little bit to accompany. And there you see already some pounding, some element of fire going on. Again. However, if I get the wedge correctly, like this, I will replace the attack anyway. Again. As you can see, it only skims my shoulder, which is okay in the first stages of the learner. In later stages, we don't even want that because, as the saying goes, there is no silat without the knife and we always train with the possibility of a knife in our mind. So, therefore, 
we have again a small element of splitting our wedge and dragging this out while we go forward. So this is then directly going into pounding of higher movement. But it is starting from the same wedge entry. Now, let's see what she will do. Exactly. A bit more like this. Yes. See, that is not difficult. Now we will progress. I have first attacked her on this shoulder so she could get me on the outside. Then I have attacked her on that shoulder so she could get me on the inside. Now I will attack her right on her center line and she will get me on the inside or on the outside. Of course, if there is any possibility, you want to get the guy on the outside. However, if there is no possibility for such, as you can see, the wedge still protects you. Admittedly, in conjunction with the other elements of splitting, pounding, drilling, crushing, covering, but therefore it's called King E. Kuntau Silat. That Wanjuru doesn't stand alone. Now I have only done attacks with my right arm on the high line. Let us see what happens if I do attacks with my left arm. As you can see, that still works. If she comes, yeah. if she comes, I would have to go up here with my wedge, and then I really wedge her out of the way. She has an off ramp, and no matter how strong she is, since I meet her almost parallel to her fourth vector, she has an off ramp. Now, I can tell a lot of things. Let's see if that also works when I attack her. As you see, I slide it off. I almost didn't feel the impact of my arm on her, but I certainly felt her impact on my head. And as you can see, this is easily turned into some Chinna dirty trick application. So this is very suitable for self-defense. Let us see, I attack her left side with my left. Still works. Now let me explain. We had done, right now demonstrated, simple applications of the Xing Yi Kun Tao Sila Juru number one against a single direct attack. Uh, but those were all percussive solutions. Now there are also other solutions. Let us say a grappling solution. Attack me. I go out of my way with the motion of the judo. I do the change and go in. As you can now see, her body is twisted. I have attacked directly her body trunk and could easily throw her down. I so decided. In other words, this was a grappling solution. Yeah. 
This time I do a replacement defense. I go down and now I go forward with my exchange. Right where her throat is, my, she's bent over my knee. And when I turn my body, her body gets a lot of twist. And if I do not hold her up, she falls down. So that would be attacking her trunk, directly controlling her center of gravity. There is again other solutions. This is still exactly right in that exchange. Look. Doing the exchange. And what we have here would be a chinna solution. In other words, attacking the limbs, doing a joint lock or other stuff. Speaking of chinna, chinna is the art of joint locks and nerve strikes or attacks to weak spots. So in other words, as I like to translate it for our Western understanding, chinna is the art of joint locks and dirty tricks. Look again. Look where my thumb is, right into her eye. That is one, two. It's right there in the juru. So this juru is not necessarily just a percussive solution. Bang, 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 whoop. You should remember this juru could be interpreted as go forward, go back. Go forward, exchange, go back. Go forward, exchange, exchange, go back. You could equally well practice it. And here comes the part where Xin Yi and Silat have a little bit different training methodologies and the Kuntao Silat training methodology would of course also allow for going backward. Exchange, exchange. Either going back or even going forward. So instead of going forward, I could equally well go back and then another step back. Or Where might something like this be relevant? So, again, wasn't that beautiful? So, as you can see, this also has a slap down. So, the point is, those jurus may look extremely innocent and simple, but the applications I can most assuredly tell you are not. Next will be the exact bodily alignment that you use and that you need. As a bonus for here, although Xing Yi is an internal martial art, and thus Xing Yi Kuntao Silat, no matter of what flavor, is also an internal martial art, you always start with hard and external, then you go over to soft and external, then you go to hard and internal, and finally you end up soft and internal. We will go about this progression at length in another series. For now, I would like to show you some way to do conditioning uh, for this juru, which is in this case clearly external conditioning. So, as far as conditioning goes, you could go with the traditional iron or brass rings, but they cost a fortune. Those weight bags are much more affordable. This is 11 kilograms I have on this arm and 11 kilograms I have on this arm. And the conditioning goes two ways. Number one, you just do the juru. And believe me, as clumsy as this looks with the weights on, it pays a healthy dividend when you do it with your naked arms. The other way you condition, uh, you just throw your weight out.
So, you can do that in the shanty position as well. So, 20 repetitions for each side of the dural, 20 repetitions of this, three days a week, and you are building something within three, week, three months. So much for that. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, subscribe. Thumbs up. See you in the next video.